Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the bigger mysteries of cosmology that you can sort of see circled right here. This is referred to as the cold spot. The unusually large and relatively cold area inside the so-called cosmic microwave background that for the longest time now did not have a definitive explanation. And in this video we're going to be talking about one of the potential and most likely resolutions to this mystery, or basically what exactly formed this particular spot, and just generally talk about some of the most unusual and most mysterious structures in the universe, usually referred to as supervoids. But I actually wanted to start right here with this image of what's known as the Buddha's Void. Mostly because back in the days this was one of the most requested videos that I never specifically made on this topic for the reason I'm about to explain. And a lot of people were basically wondering, so what exactly is the Buddha's Void? What is this mysterious great nothing that it's usually referred to as, and what is forming these unusually large but empty structures. And one of the reasons I never specifically made a video about Buddha's void is because, well, it's just one of many, many voids. And as a matter of fact, it's not the largest or the closest to us. The closest one is known as the local void, and there is a video about this somewhere up there. But how exactly do these structures form, and what actually happens inside of them? And I guess the other question is, where are some of the larger ones? Well, in general, their formation is directly connected to the formation of the cosmic web that essentially sort of spreads across the entire universe and usually has the galaxies connecting to one another. In essence, the cosmic web itself sort of looks like this, and everything you see in the middle, those are different galaxies and a lot of different types of gas. But naturally, in between the cosmic web and in between all of these galaxies and all of this gas, there are these voids, or slightly emptier space that doesn't contain as much density, doesn't contain as many galaxies, and doesn't generally contain much of anything. There is still some stuff there, there are even some galaxies there, just not as many as inside the web itself. And a lot of these simulations made over the last few years using various supercomputers, like this one right here, known as the Illustrious Project, have generally been able to recreate this cosmic web, showing the scientists exactly how all of this forms, but more importantly, also recreating a lot of these structures, such as voids and supervoids, just as we see them in the real universe as well. And so, in essence, some of these empty spaces right here, these are the voids you see in this three-dimensional map of the nearby space. Oh, and by the way, just to give you perspective here, these are actually huge distances. Here it's about 700 million light years away from us, and our galaxy is not even visible in this picture, it's just a tiny, tiny blob somewhere right there. But why exactly are we talking about this? Well, as you probably guessed by now, the recent study quite thoroughly investigates and more or less definitively proves that this cold spot right here sort of represents one of the biggest voids out there that in essence answers a lot of questions, including the question I asked previously about the biggest super void out there, and also the question in regards to why exactly this particular cold spot even exists. Although, okay, let's actually take a few steps back and briefly talk about the CMB. So naturally, what you're looking at right here is the leftover radiation or the so-called relic radiation from the early universe. This is the first light in the universe as it traveled across the universe for practically 13.8 billion years. This light was originally created when the universe was just under 380,000 years old and basically represents the first electromagnetic radiation that was created in the universe itself. And by traveling for 13.8 billion years, it eventually sort of redshifted into the current frequencies and even though originally it was about 3000 Kelvin in temperature, now it's down to approximately 2.7 Kelvin, so almost absolute zero temperatures. And so in essence, this is the light that's only visible in the microwave spectrum of radiation in the gigahertz frequencies, just above the radio waves. But, as you can see from the map, there is quite a lot of variation, with certain parts being specifically interesting because they seem to be a little bit cooler. But the actual temperature difference here is very minute. It's about 7 microkelvin, or about 0.000070 degrees kelvin. But it is, nevertheless, a representation of some sort of a difference, or some sort of a structural formation, that created this particular cold spot. And here's actually what all of this would look like in a nice case, if you were to somehow see all of this radiation. And since the original discovery of this cold spot a few years ago, there's been quite a lot of discussion about its potential origins. One of the more unusual sort of explanations in this case involved multiple universes. 
In this case, at least one scientist made a somewhat controversial claim that it could maybe some sort of an imprint from another universe that seems to be beyond our own. Something that happened before the cosmic inflation early on in the creation or the formation of the universe. Now, because it's somewhat difficult to prove this, and because the ideas here are basically extremely hypothetical, it's practically impossible to prove or disprove this. So a better way to actually analyze this is to see if we can come up with a better explanation. If you are interested in this proposition though, you can check out more about this in the wiki in the description below. And so the much better and more widely accepted explanation in the last few years was actually in regards to the previously mentioned voids. In this particular case, it's always been suggested that there was some kind of a super void here, so large that it would make it probably the largest void we've discovered so far. It's been always referred to as the Eridanus super void. And there are several physical theories explaining how such a void would actually, potentially, create a cold spot inside the microwave background radiation. And so this new study decided to see if they can prove the existence of this void by using the data from the so-called dark energy survey. And specifically, they actually wanted to see if the observations from the Planck telescope that created the microwave background map could be then matched with some of the other maps, for example, produced by the Dark Energy Survey. And this survey doesn't actually use microwave background radiation, it uses entirely different observations. In this case, it looks at various near-ultraviolet, visible and near-infrared observations and measures the expansion of the universe using type 1 supernova, various large galactic clusters, and various other effects, including gravitational lending effects, produced by various events. And by using this survey, in the past the scientists have actually been able to create not just the map of the dark energy distribution, but also the map of dark matter, which basically acts in the opposite way. And so some of the most accurate dark matter maps we have so far have actually been produced by this particular survey. Here's for example one of the most recent maps produced by the survey from 2021. And so by comparing the maps from DES to the maps from CMB, the scientists realized that they too seem to match. In the process discovering that this particular region seems to have a lot less galaxies than a lot of other regions nearby. Naturally also containing a lot less dark matter as well. Fitting the definition of what you would call a void, or in this case a super void. And according to the scientists in this paper, this would be a gigantic structure, empty structure. It would be approximately 1.8 billion light years across and would be located approximately 2 billion light years away from us, which also means that it's probably the nearest such supervoid to us, or as it's referred to in a paper, the nearest under density to Earth, with the average density inside the void being approximately 30% less than the density of mass and galaxies and so on around it. And so once again, it's not that it's empty space, it's actually not empty at all, it's just there's a lot less stuff on the inside. Which is why it creates this cold spot visible right here. But at the same time, it also seems to be cigar shaped or sausage shaped, and we're basically looking at it from, I guess, this perspective right here. So we're sort of facing the tunnel in this case. And although this does sort of explain everything once and for all, it doesn't explain one thing. It doesn't explain the origins or how such a huge structure was created. And mostly because, at the moment, all of the models do not produce any such extremely large structures. It kind of suggests that either there is something wrong with our current physical model of the universe, or for some reason the universe decided to produce this unusually anomalous object that's somewhat difficult to explain using modern physics. Either way, whatever the explanation is going to be in the next few years, the paper itself is very interesting, and the finding in this case almost definitively proves that Eridanus supervoid is basically the largest such formation close to us, and is probably one of the biggest supervoids in the universe, and actually most likely even closer to us as well. It's also not in this map right now, mostly because this is a little bit outdated. But for now we don't really know what's happening inside the void and how it was formed. Maybe there was more dark energy present in this region, and so the universe expanded a little bit faster, or maybe there are some other unexplained phenomena happening inside the void that's causing these effects. Either way though, it's definitely going to be really interesting to find out what the explanation for this is in some of the future studies. For example, one of the suggestions in the paper is that maybe there's actually something going on with the slightly weaker gravitational landing effect that's already been detected in the paper. Whatever it is, the future will tell. For now, it's definitely a great confirmation and a great explanation to an old mystery. 
Want to learn more? There's going to be a video, so make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.